Advanced Accounting, number 12, part five, consolidations. And we're going to talk about some miscellaneous balance sheet transactions that relate to consolidation. So these are similar to the ones you saw in the prior video. So in this case, Bullen, a parent company, acquires 100% of the voting stock of Vicara Sub. You're given book values and fair values on that date. And what I've done off to the right here is, is that Vigor, the company that's being acquired, has some fair market values that are different from the book values that you have listed in the chart on the left. So what I've done is total them up, and we see that in total, Vigor has assets in the book that have a fair market value greater than book value of $100,000. Now, you'll note on the liabilities that the liabilities are 10000 less fair market value than books, so that actually is an addition. So a lower liability value is the same as a higher asset value, so I put that in the asset column and I added a little explanation. The reduced liability is the same as an asset increase. Now, here's where there's a twist that's different from the, what you saw in the prior video. Assume that Bull and the Parent issues some stock to pay for the acquisition. They issue 12,000 shares of common stock with a $5 par value. And remember that par value is just an accounting entry that determines um, how much of the value of the stock that's issued goes on the common stock line of the equity section of the balance sheet. So what's on the common stock line is number of shares multiplied by par value. The fair value of what the share is issued is $47 a share, and they use that stock issuance to obtain all of Vicar the Sub's outstanding common stock. All that this question is being ask, is asking is how much goodwill should be recognized. So what I did on this line is I calculated the value of the stock that Bull and the Parent issued, fair market value, 12,000 shares, times $47 a share, $564,000. Now, what's the book value of the acquired company, of the sub? What's the book value? Well, it's the sum of the line items in the equity section of the balance sheet. So I added up common stock, additional paid in capital, and retained earnings, and I got $360,000. The difference that you've seen on prior videos between the fair market value of the consideration and the book value of the asset you acquire, that difference is called a differential. And we've also learned on past videos that that differential goes to places. It can go to the fair market value of the assets, or if you pay more than the fair market value of the assets, you've created goodwill in most cases. So, of the differential of 204, we found out above that $100,000 is the total amount that fair value exceeds book value. So, that accounts for part of the differential. And the remaining amount, the entire differential of 204 less the fair market value of 100, that's the goodwill that's created. That's going to be an asset on the balance sheet of the acquired company, and that's going to be an asset, an intangible asset that we amortize over time. A few other bits and pieces when it comes to consolidated balance sheets here. <clears throat> what about consolidated net assets? Well, again, if you run through a situation where an acquiring company issues shares, shares times fair market value. In this case, that's a $1,190,000 of stock. And I made a note, if you look next to the fair value, that, that is new, th those are, I should say, new shares issued by the acquiring company. What are they buying? They're buying the book value of the acquired company, and specifically the sum of all the items in the equity section of the balance sheet. We saw that before. But really what's happening is, is that we the, the parent company is issuing shares, new equity, and is removing or replacing the equity of the 
of the subsidiary because the equity, the subsidiary that's being bought 100%, you're buying that equity, and so you're in a journal entry debiting to remove that equity from the balance sheet. So if you want to find out consolidated net assets, it's the sum of X out of this, the stock that was issued, new stock, by the acquiring company, a million one ninety. You do not count the equity of the acquired company because that goes away, that's debited and removed. So we add in the beginning equity section, the beginning net assets or equity section of the acquirer, Blue Town, and we add those up, and that's the consolidated balance sheet of the acquired company. So just to be clear, the consolidated balance sheet of the acquired company, when it's 100% purchase, does not include the equity section of the company that is acquired because that equity goes away. What about paid in capital? Here's a scenario again where somebody buys 100% of a company, they issue liabilities and common stock, they have various fees that are paid to people who are going to assist in raising those funds. So a lot of this information, you don't need to answer the question. The bottom line question is, what is the amount of consolidated additional paid in capital as of the date of the acquisition? And the issue here is, is that in a consolidation, as I just mentioned in the prior question, the consolidated stockholder's equity is just the parent stockholder's equity if there's a 100% purchase. So the, it follows that the additional paid in capital would only be the additional paid in capital to parent, which now would include that stock issuance or debt issuance, just the, the, the stock issuance to buy the company. So it would be the parent's beginning equity section plus any equity that they issued to buy the other company. One more here, what about consolidating assets? We have a situation where Atwood and Franz are here. Franz is the acquired company. You can see that we have fair values in excess of book value. And so the question at the bottom here is, well, what's the consolidated inventory? Well, obviously the companies combined, you're buying the company to get its assets. So you'd have beginning inventory of the sub, 1230, the inventory balance I'm sorry, inventory of the parent, 1230, inventory of the sub, 420. And then because there's an acquisition, you're going to add in the fair market value of the sub that's greater than book value. That goes into your calculation of the differential. And so you add it all up, and that is your consolidated inventory amount. That's what the inventory account would be on the consolidated financial statements. That's as far as we'll get on this discussion. If you go to the website, stltest.net. In addition to the tutoring services, you'll see that I have the accounting video textbooks. Right now we have a three-hour, three-minute course on accounting for investments. Here's the price. Here's a YouTube channel that explains the table of contents. And if you click on that link in the middle, you come to a screen where you can buy the book and download a three-hour MP4 player. And in addition, I send the spreadsheets that were used to create the video and also a practice exam with answers. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see